and welcome to worship on this 25th Sunday in the season after Pentecost. We are glad to have you joining us in worship and praise here at First Presbyterian Church, Brockville. Just a few announcements for your information. This Sunday, we are marking Legacy Sunday. Every year, the Presbyterian Church in Canada sets aside one Sunday a year as Legacy Sunday, giving worshipers an opportunity to think about the long-term impact of their gifts of time, talent, and treasure. Today, as you can see next to me, we will be dedicating a plaque honoring a legacy gift to this con congregation made by Clifford and Mary Wing in memory of their son, Paul. We give thanks for these gifts and so many other gifts, both financial and otherwise, that have sustained and will continue to support this congregation. We at First Presbyterian Church continue to be active with local justice initiatives. Our Open Arms Brockville Refugee Sponsorship Group is continuing its fundraising to support three Syrian refugees. Uh, we'd ask you to give if you're able, and you can contact the church office for more information. We are also continuing to receive donations for the Brockville and Area Food Bank's survival bags. These bags are designed to be given out to those who are homeless or housing insecure. Uh, you may donate financially through your offerings or drop off personal care items, socks, can openers, hoodies or sweatshirts, or Tim Horton's gift cards, and we will make sure that they are delivered to the food bank. And we are always thankful to receive white and chocolate cake mixes, and coffee for loaves and fishes, which feeds so many people in our community, Monday to Friday each week. You may also donate financially through your offerings. Just please mark your offerings, loaves and fishes. Our music ensembles, especially our handbell choir and our flute ensemble, are also looking for new members now that they are able to rehearse and, and uh, lead in worship. Please contact our music director, Kathleen Howard. You can contact her through the church office if you would like to take part. Hallelujah, we're starting up our PA Day camp program again after almost a year. The camp will be held on November 26 from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Our mission project is also in support of the Brock Culinary Food Bank, one of the key local agencies in dealing with hunger and homelessness in our community. We will be collecting socks, mitts, and toques for all ages. We'd be grateful for any donations of items for the PA Day Camp. You can drop them off at the church office, or if you're here in person on a Sunday morning, there's a bin at the back of the sanctuary that you may put them in. In Advent 2021, Presbyterians across the country are invited to join a book study on Adam Hamilton's incarnation, rediscovering the significance of Christmas. Written during the COVID-19 pandemic, this book speaks to the experience of contemporary Christians as we reflect on the world-changing significance of the child we celebrate at Christmas. I will be offering the study by Zoom through Advent. The book will be sold out quickly and we'd like to have copies for all who are interested. So uh, there will also be a weekly study guide to go with the book that you will receive as each session becomes available. The uh, group sessions will be on Wednesday afternoons at 3.30. I will send out the link to anybody who's interested. Uh, please call or email the church office if you have questions and to let us know if you would like to take part. Finally, we will be welcoming the Brockville General Hospital Palliative Day Hospice Program starting in mid-November here at First Presbyterian Church. They will be using the parlor, the kitchen, and the hall during the day on Wednesdays. Please keep this outreach in your prayers as they start up again after an 18-month delay due to COVID-19. And our drop-in breakfast continue to be ongoing. The next one will be happening on November 17th. Um, so if you would like to donate gifts of uh, money or if you'd like to donate uh, juice boxes, cheese, um, cereal bars, anything like that, we would be thankful to, use those, to, to give those to those who are hungry and are looking for breakfast. <clears throat> there is lots happening here at First Church. We'd ask you to please check our social media or our website for more information. And now let us approach God with joy and gladness on this Sunday. Grateful that we are invited to participate in God's mission to redeem and care for this broken and hurting world. We now come to God with our call to worship, which will be on the screen in front of you, and we will read it responsibly. Let us praise the one who has filled the world with blessings. Let us sing to the Creator, 
who has filled our lives with joy. Troubles come upon us, unexpected opportunities cross our paths, but we step forward in faith, sharing our gifts. Our opening hymn is, if you have one of our hymn books, is number 663. God, whose giving knows no ending. If you don't have the hymn book, no worries. The words will be on the screen in front of you to sing along. Dedication of a plaque in memory of Paul Wing. 
Please read with me the prayer of thanksgiving, which will be on the screen in front of you. <clears throat> Ever-present God, you have been with us throughout our days. Like a parent to a child, you lavish gifts on us. As we gather to receive another gift, may we be reminded of your kindness to us and to all creation. May we be inspired again to cooperate in your generosity and become gifts of your love to the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And today we're dedicating this plaque. Uh, Paul and or, uh, Clifford and Mary Wing made a generous donation in their wills to First Presbyterian Church. And they asked that it be in memory of their son, Paul Wing, whom they lost early in life. So here's the plaque, and the, la the words at the bottom are from the Book of Lamentations. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. The through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed, because his compassions uh, fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. So we thank uh, the Wing family for their generosity to this church, and we dedicate this plaque in the memory of their son, Paul. So I now ask you to, uh, to join with me in the responsive readings on the screens in front of you. Congregation of First Presbyterian Church, will you receive this plaque in honor of our dear friends, Mary and Clifford Wing, in memory of their son, Paul, and dedicate it to the glory of God? We will with thanks and gratitude to God. God has been good to us. This plaque is yet one more sign of God's kindness. May it remind us that we are loved and called to love. We have been treated generously and are called to treat others with generosity. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, I declare this gift to be set apart for this use, for making God's name great in the world. Let us pray responsively. Again, the words will be on the screen. Almighty God, from time to time you have lavished gifts on your people. You even gave of yourself, leaving the glories of heaven to walk among us. You have shown your love over and over, and we have experienced your glory in tangible ways. Today we receive this plaque in remembrance of Paul Wing. Accepting it as a demonstration of your kindness, we affirm that it is yours as we are yours. May who we are and all we have be devoted to your service and given for your glory. Living God, may your spirit use this plaque and the gift from Mary and Clifford to increase our faith in you and your work. Let us be strong to walk in the ways of Christ, expressing your love and demonstrating your kindness today and always. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now bow our heads as we prepare to hear the word that God has for us today. O oh Lord, teach us your ways and give us the grace to follow them. Give us eyes to see the world as you do. Give us hearts to love others as you do. And give us the wisdom to discern how best to live as followers of Jesus, your living word. Amen. And now I invite Andrew Cameron, he will come forward and read our scriptures for us today. Our first reading is responsive, Psalm 16, the words will be on the screen. Psalm 16, protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I, I say to the Lord, you are my Lord, I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble, in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out, or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gave me counsel. In, in the, the night, night also, also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me. The, the Lord, Lord is at my right hand. hand. I, I shall not be moved. moved. Therefore, Therefore my heart is glad, and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. 
For you do not give me up to Sheol, or let your faithful ones see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Our scripture reading for this morning is from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 3, verse 4b to 14. If someone else thinks that they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law, a Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, and as for righteousness based on the law, faultless. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage, that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of His resurrection and the participation in His sufferings, becoming like Him in His death, and so, somehow, attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that which for Jesus Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straighting toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God within us, for the word of God around us, Thanks be to God.
Loving God, may the message that you have to give to those who are gathered here today, may it come through me or if need be, in spite of me, for Jesus' sake. Amen. As many of you know, you may not know, but I am a runner. Well, more of a jogger, really. I love to go out, though, in the fresh air. I love to feel my muscles working, and I want to see how much further I can run each time I go out. Not to mention, I can get away with the occasional cookie or glass of wine and keep my weight down. <laughs> I know many of you are walkers as well. And that's also great exercise, whether walking a familiar trail or checking out new ones. Whether walking or running or not, we are on a journey, a journey through life. At times, the path is slow and frustrating as we wait for change to happen. At times, the path is intense as we keep moving, trying to keep up. Sometimes, we feel like we're just walking in circles. Or, like the Israelites during their 40 years in the desert, just wandering, not sure where to go next. The Apostle Paul, who wrote the letter to the Philippians that we heard Andrew read for us today, he was always journeying. Often he didn't know where God would tell him to go next. But all along the journey, as we read from our text today, Paul is thinking about the future, and he's always moving ahead. This movement is rooted in his relationship with God through Christ, who's always calling him forward. In Philippians 3, verse 12, Paul writes, Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Even from prison, Paul's and his multiple letters helped early church communities move forward because he had his eye on the goal, far beyond any present circumstances. The goal is drawing nearer to God, known to us in Christ. That path that wherever or whatever God is calling us to do, to serve, to learn, to be in relationship, to support each other, and always sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. As I mentioned earlier this morning, this Sunday is Legacy Sunday in the Presbyterian Church in Canada, and we celebrated a legacy gift to us and to this ministry here. Legacy gifts, or planned gifts as they're sometimes called, is a way for people to keep moving forward in faith. These gifts are more intentional than weekly offerings, and they generally come from savings or accumulated resources. They often have special tax benefits and require planning to give. And they generally support ministry that is forward thinking. The most common type of legacy gift coming to the, that comes to the church like we celebrated today is when a person dies. Money left in a will, a gift of life insurance, or a charitable gift annuity. However, a planned gift can also be given when a person's alive. Personal investments like stocks, bonds, or mutual funds, or a valuable piece of property can all be used to support ministry into the future. Planned gifts can have a big impact on faith communities like ours, because these gifts might allow a church to go ahead with a ministry or special project that they otherwise wouldn't have been able to do. The legacy of that investment in ministry may be felt for generations to come. A planned gift doesn't have to be big. When given in faith and joined with the gifts of others, small gifts can make a big difference. Jesus' teachings and stories remind us that everyone is blessed. They're valued and they're entrusted with resources, money, time, talents, life, families. We are given these resources by God, 
And it's up to us how we use or steward these gifts. The ministry we do and the impact of legacy gifts looks a little different for each congregation. As a church, and especially as Presbyterians, well, we're known to be a thinking people. We take our time in doing things. We think carefully. We assess and we reassess. We pray and we ponder. We look at the big picture, the long range goals. But you know, even with all that thinking, there are things we don't know about how our ministry and our lives will unfold. I think we can safely say the past 19 or 20 months has taught us, well, we can't plan for everything. And yet, we keep moving forward in faith. We pledge from our resources, make use of our strengths, and invest in what will enable us to serve God and make our community better. Stepping forward in faith always involves risk. Paul, for example, risked everything to share God's love, creating and supporting communities that would live out the way of Jesus. And he ended up in jail because of this work. Jesus is another example. He invested in the lot himself, his entire self, in the lives of fishermen and tax collectors, trusting that they would pass on the good news. By his presence on earth and his life, his death, and his new life, God took the risk that we would accept this amazing good news and share it with others. Taking risks can be intimidating. But people of faith have always taken risks. This congregation, just a couple of weeks ago, we celebrated 210 years of faithfulness. We've celebrated, we've, this congregation ex has existed through Confederation, through the Spanish flu pandemic, World Wars I and II, 9-11, and the multitude of events and crises and challenges that have taken place here in Canada and around the world over the years. Yet, many faithful people have made investments in us, in this church community, and in those we love, and they continue to inspire us. This congregation, over its 210 years, has been blessed with many legacy gifts. Gifts such as that from Mary and Clifford Wing, which we are commemorating today. Large gifts from people such as Eric and Vera Kirkby, Cora Westerbeek, and the Krugel family. Gifts that have been in, given to be enjoyed during life, such as the beautiful handbell choir set that we have from Max Farley. Gifts like our pulpit falls, like this here, which are given in memory of Mary Ross and Alex Tutak, and others, so many others too numerous to mention, but for which we give thanks. We as followers of Jesus are asked to take risks every day, to love, to hope, to be generous and to try something new. Like Paul, we're not always expert, but when we continue to run the race and when we continue to be generous, our lives and the lives of others are enriched. As we step forward in faith together, we move toward the God who created us and who loves us. We know the road is not always safe. The path is not always smooth. But through it all, God goes with us. As we step forward, taking risks and sharing our gifts and resources, there is always life-giving community to be found. Amen. Let us pray. The disciples wondered when the kingdom of God would become a reality. The time is now. It will not be easy. Through the word heard today, we are strengthened and prepared to bring forth new life 
and renewed hope for the future. May it be so. Amen. Our next hymn is number 570. If you happen to have one of our hymn books, I have decided to follow Jesus. The words will also be on the screen in front of you. So please join us in singing this hymn. blessing us continuously with the gifts that only he can give. Let us pray. God of abundance, yours is a giving that knows no ending. We benefit from your graciousness that spills into our world in all kinds of ways. You give us the courage to run the race, to follow the path, to persevere taking one step at a time. Enable us to feel your presence. Give us the strength to continue the journey together in love. We pray for all who feel alone this day and for all who feel isolated. Bring comfort to them and open our eyes to see those waiting for us to reach out. God of hope, we give thanks that you are a God who yearns for us and waits for us. We are grateful for material comfort, for the wealth of relationships and for joy. We thank you for a sense of purpose, for kind visitors, for community, connection, and new beginnings. Inspiring God, guide our ministries, our church and sessions, our presbyteries, our national church offices and committees, that you may help us to faithfully serve and love one another as we seek to draw near to you. God of all nations, we give you thanks that we are all made in your image with such rich diversity. Let us work toward unity, love, and respect for each other. Help us remember that we are still one body in you, even though we have different languages, cultures, and traditions. Encourage us to work toward dismantling systems that oppress others based on their race, skin color, ethnicity, economic status, sexual orientation, or disability. Wise God, we pray for places in our world where justice reigns unchallenged, and where people struggle to meet the needs of their families. We especially pray for the people of Afghanistan, Syria, Eritrea, Ethiopia, South Sudan, and Israel, Palestine. We also pray for governments and organizations that are working to address the impact of climate change, especially for developing countries and those who are living in poverty due to global warming. Bring peace and help as we dream of a world where there is enough for all. 
Loving God, we pray for all who are sick this day in body, mind, or spirit, and for all who mourn loved ones or other losses in their lives. We especially pray for those who are struggling with the immediate and long-term effects of COVID-19. We pray for healthcare and frontline workers who care for the sick and continue to maintain essential services. Bring healing and new beginnings. Fill them with hope and strength. Wrap your loving arms around them and grant them peace. Giving God, we are grateful for each person who has taught us about generosity, for each one who has left a legacy for us to enjoy, family, friends, teachers, role models, people in our faith community. Help us to be generous with what we have as we consider the legacy of faith, hope, and resources that we want to leave for future generations. All this we ask in faith as we pray the prayer your Son taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. given us, the offering of our money, our talents, our time, and our very selves. Use them and us to demonstrate your love for the world and for the work of your kingdom. Our ministry and mission continue to be ongoing here at First Presbyterian Church Brockville in this community, across the country, and around the world. There are many ways you can donate online. Please check our website for the most detailed information. You may also send your check in the mail to First Presbyterian Church, 10 Church Street, Box 885, Brockville, K6V, 5W1, or if you live in our area, you may drop off your offering or envelope through the, contactlessly through the mail slot in our door, red door on Church Street, and those envelopes are collected regularly. However much you give, and however you are able to give, we thank you for your generosity that allows us to continue to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Let us now bless our offerings by singing the doxology. The words will be on the screen. aware of all that we enjoy in Christ and in creation. Bless these gifts and the service we offer in Jesus' name, so that others may share in your goodness and know of the love we have witnessed in Christ, our friend and our Savior. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 641 in the hymn book, if you happen to have it. One more step along the world I go. Otherwise, please sing along with the words on the screen.
the rock of our salvation, bless us now. We are called to join in faith to work for the coming of Christ's kingdom. God loves you with a love beyond all human understanding. So carry that love out into the world to share it in peace, hope, and faith. And as we go, let us step forward in faith to love and serve all with the blessing and peace of God our Creator, Jesus our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit our Sustainer, now and forever. Amen.